Okay, so I have to find the equation like I did before. Y equals, there's my rule. So I need my slope and my y-intercept. Well, I don't see my y-intercept right now, so let's do the slope plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2. 4 over 2 is 2. Okay, I got my slope. You fill this in. 14 plus 4 is 18, and 7 plus 2 is 9. Now there's a problem because my y-intercept is what has the 0. But it doesn't follow the pattern. 9, 7, 5, 3, 1, negative 1. It skips right over. So if the y-intercept is not visible from the table, here's what you're going to do. You're going to use what you know, which is y equals mx plus b. The m is your slope, which is right there. So I'm going to put a 2 right there. My b is what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know what it is yet. So I'm going to use one of these points to figure it out. I feel like the easiest thing to do is use the first point. So I'm going to take that and that, which means now I'm going to take the x and it goes in for 1. So my x is 1. I don't know my b. If I knew my b, we'd have no problem. Now when my x is 1, my y is 6. And now I'm going to solve for b. 2 times 1 is 2. How we get b by itself is this has got to go away. So you do the opposite. And you get 4 equals b. So I just got my b. There it is. Boom. Now I can write my equation. y equals 2x plus 4. Let's do the next one. Okay, so let's see. Plus one, three, five. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So that's plus two, plus two. This is minus two, minus two. Negative two over two is negative one. I've got my slope. Let's fill this in. Negative three, negative one, one, three, five. If I'm going backwards, instead of going plus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, that's negative 1. So if I'm trying to get my y-intercept, it's right in the middle here. That's too hard to figure out. So remember what I do. I write y equals mx plus b. I'm going to take my m right there. And instead of writing m, I'm going to write negative 1. And then I'm going to take an x and a y. The easiest thing is to just use the first x and the first y. So this is my x plus b and this is my y. A negative times a negative is a positive. The way to get rid of it is to do the opposite. I just got my b. Boom! Now I can do my function. Since they're calling it a function this time, and it's f of x, I have to do f of x. Negative 1 x plus 2. If I want to be super fancy, I'll write this. Okay? Now I want to point out, I want you to see what if this time I did this problem so I'm going to go y equals mx plus b. And I used the same m, negative 1. But this time I decided to use the point 1 comma 1. Let's try it. So 1 goes in for x. And 1 goes in for y. A negative times a positive is a negative. The opposite of minus 1 is plus 1. 2 equals b. Well, that's what I got when I used this point. And then look, I also got it when I used the other point. So no matter what point you use, you still get b equals 2. I just like to pick the first one because I think it's easiest. And I don't have to think as much. Okay, let's go to the next one. The pattern is it's getting bigger y1, so that would make that negative 9. This is getting smaller by 2, 
So minus 2, minus 2, it works. 1 over negative 2 is negative 1 half. Let me move that up, sorry. I don't see the y-intercept, and honestly, if I had to keep going, ugh, 14, 12, da, 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 yuck. y equals mx plus b. My m is right there, negative 1 half. Remember, I like to use the first point, so my x and my y, I'm going to use the first point. So my x is 24. and my y is negative 11. When I'm multiplying by a half, I just take half the number. Half of 24 is 12, that's negative. If this is minus, the opposite is plus. 1 equals b. I got my b, it's 1. Now I can write my function, f of x equals, let me show that, negative 1 half x plus 1. Okay? So that's what we're doing today. All right, let's turn the page and see if there's another one. Okay, let's keep playing the game. Now here's the problem. Uh, it's getting smaller, and then it's getting bigger, and then it's getting smaller, and then it's getting bigger. Okay, I don't know what the pattern is there. But I do see that here it's 8 and 8, which means the pattern is still 8. So that means it's plus 0 plus 0. Well, 0 over, I don't know, is 0. So I don't see the y-intercept. So what am I going to do? Let me zoom this out a little bit. y equals mx plus b. If you look, my m is 0. I'm going to pick the first point because that's easiest for me. My x is 17. I know it says n, but it's the same thing. I don't know my b and my y is 8. Anything times 0 is 0. Minus 0, minus 0, oops. 8 equals b. I just got my b, boom. Now I can write my rule. Well, it says use t of n this time. So t of n equals 0n plus 8. And if I want to be really fancy, t of n equals 8. Okay? Let's play the same game here, but this time it's plus 0 plus 0 because it's always negative 3. And here it's going down, and then it could be going up. So I don't know. Those numbers can be anything. I don't know. 17 and 23. Who cares? But this time, I don't know what's on top, but there's a 0 on the bottom. If you remember, under the line is undefined. That means my slope is undefined. That means my y-intercept is undefined. So I can't do y equals mx plus b because it doesn't follow any of the rules. That means what I got to do is do my own rule. What does x equal? Negative 3. Okay? Let's go to the next one. I notice the numbers are getting smaller by 3. So that means that's negative 36. This is getting bigger by 4. 19 plus 4 is 23. 4 over negative 3 is negative 4 over 3. My y-intercept, I don't see it. So now I've got to go y equals mx plus b. Well, my m is negative 4 over 3. Remember, for my x, I like to use my first point. So my x, let me highlight that there so you can see that. My x is negative 24 plus b, and my y is 7. Now this one is more difficult, so let me do this to the side. When you have negative 4 thirds times negative 24, 3 goes into 24 8 times, and then a negative times a negative is a positive, and 4 times 8 is 32. So it's 7 equals 32 plus b. This is positive. The opposite is negative. 32 minus 7 is 25. Bigger guy wins. I just got my b. Boom, negative 25. Therefore, my equation, y equals 
negative 4 thirds x minus 25. Okay. All right. Let's do these. This time it's a little bit different. They gave me the m. The problem is I don't see any y-intercept. So this is just like before. I have the m, but I don't have the b, so I had to take one of the points. Well, they gave me the point. So first thing I do, y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. This goes in for x, this goes in for y. This goes in for x, this goes in for y. This goes in for x, this goes in for y. So I'm going to take the negative 9 for x, 1. Negative 4, negative 3, y, 11, 23. So 1 goes in there. My slope, so I'll follow the game, negative 4 times negative 9. I don't know my b. If I knew my b, this wouldn't be as big of a deal. 1 equals 36 plus b minus 36. 36 minus 1 is 35, negative. So now I got my b. Now here's the important part. They didn't give me a cute little line that said equation. So I'm just going to have to write the equation. y equals negative 4 x minus 35. All right. I'm going to pause this real quick, finish these, and you're going to check them. So you'll notice for the second one, negative 3 for y, x is negative 4, and there's my m. Half of 4 is 2, negative, add 2. There's my b right there, because the bigger guy wins. There we go. We got m, check. We got b, check. And there's my equation. For the next one, I did the same thing. My m was 0. This one in for my x. This one in for my y. 0 times anything is 0. When you subtract, boom, b equals 23. y equals 0x plus 23. And if you're really fancy, boom. So now that you have that done, your homework is, of course, you know, it's the next page, and there are 1, 2, and then 3, 4. Five examples for homework, and you're good to go.